Hello everyone, welcome back to 3 News Now. I'm Stephanie Haney and today is Friday, April 1st. Thanks for being here for the top stories from WKYC.com and our WKYC app. This is where we bring you the stories that matter most to you here in Northeast Ohio. These are the stories that you are reading, clicking on, and sharing from our website and our app. And we start with an update that a lot of people are paying attention to today. We now know the names of the three suspects who have been arrested in connection with the in the line of duty death of Bluffton officer Dominic Francis. We know that those suspects range in age from 19 to 21 years old. As a reminder, it was a very early on Thursday morning when officer Francis was struck by a vehicle as he was putting down something that's called stop sticks. These are tools that are used by police officers to stop a vehicle that's in the middle of fleeing or in part of a pursuit or some sort of a chase. So here are who we know have been arrested in connection and are considered suspects at this point in the killing of Officer Francis. Emmon Johnson, who is 20 years old, being held at the Hancock County Justice Center. Zachary Love, 21 years old, also being held at the Hancock County Justice Center. And Dante Tate, 19 years old, being held at the Medina County Jail. Officer Francis was just 42 years old when he was killed in the line of duty yesterday morning. It was around 3 a.m. This happened at about 2.30 a.m. And that and the suspects then ran on foot trying to get away from the situation. So around 3 a.m. there was a Toyota Prius that was stolen from a home on County Road 29 in Hancock County. One of the suspects was arrested in that general area. Then the Prius was located by a trooper on I-71 near mile marker 28 in Medina County. The pursuit ended at about 8.15 a.m. on Route 57. That's where a second person was arrested. And then the third suspect was arrested following a hunt for that person. That was in Hancock County at 12.49 p.m. yesterday. As we get more information on this, we will definitely bring it to you. Now, what we have been doing is we have been streaming the trial that's called the Giaga's Child Murder Trial. So today was day two in that situation. And here's an update on what we know so far. Defense attorney Stephen Bradley in his opening statement told the Cuyahoga County Coroner's Office that the baby was not born alive and was, breathe and was not breathing. He is uh, refuting that suggestion, refuting that determination by the Cuyahoga County Coroner's Office that the baby was born alive and breathing when a woman, Gail Eastwood Ritchie, who was 22 years old at the time, gave birth to the child. And we also are now learning that happened in the bathroom of Shaker Heights home where she was working as a nanny. So this situation dates back just over 30 years ago. The situation dates back to March 25th, 1993, when a baby boy's body was found in a trash bag on Sidley Road. So that case was cold for years. But then, authorities say, Gail Eastwood Ritchie of Euclid was arrested in June of 2019 when she matched as a family member of that child in DNA testing. So she has now been charged with aggravated murder in the case. So today wrapped up day two of the trial. That wrapped up at around 11.30 a.m. That trial will resume tomorrow at 8.30 a.m. You'll be able to see what's available from that on WKYC.com and our WKYC app. Now we're learning more about what's happening between Ukraine and Russia as peace talks are supposed to be continuing, but now there are reports that Ukraine has struck in Russian territory. So the talks a bit uh, up in the air at the moment. What we are learning is that there was another attempt to rescue civilians from Mariupol in Ukraine, and that broke down as the Russians are accusing Ukrainians of launching a cross-border helicopter attack on an oil depot. So the governor of Russia's region where this is said to have happened alleges that there was an airstrike by two helicopter gunships, that there were multiple fires, that two people were injured, and someone for Russia had said that the Russian territory and the attack on this territory could undermine negotiations between Russia and Ukrainian representatives. Now it's not immediately possible to verify that information about this alleged attack in Russia by Ukrainian helicopters. Ukrainian's foreign minister was asked while in Warsaw if this could be confirmed, and the minister said that it could not be confirmed or rejected because that person simply did not have all of the military information. So the latest negotiations have been taking place over video conferencing. This is after a meeting in Turkey on Tuesday. Ukraine 
has said it is willing to abandon its bid to join NATO, which seems to be a particular motivation for Russia for these attacks, and that it wants to have its neutral military status guaranteed by a range of foreign countries. Now, the head of the Russian delegation posted on social media that Russia's position on retaining control of the Crimean Peninsula for, that, that took place years ago and expanding the territory in eastern Ukraine has not changed. So what we have been hearing about Russia saying that it would be retreating from certain areas, we've heard murmurings that this is actually a regrouping and a redeployment, and this does seem to be more of an eastern land grab potentially by Russia that seems to support that statement. Now we are also learning that White House Press Secretary John Psaki might be taking a job with MSNBC. Multiple reports are saying that this is something she's hoping to do in May. She did say last year that she had hoped to be out of this position in about a year so that she could spend more time with family. So multiple reports are saying that could be what happens now. She's been a key public face of the administration since President Joe Biden took office in 2021, giving those daily briefings to the White House press corps and also discussing the president's policy plans. So this news was first reported by Axios and confirmed by CNBC. The on-air deal not yet finalized, but uh, Saki has informed senior officials of the White House about her plans, and MSNBC has reportedly been working with ethics and compliance lawyers to make sure that all the T's are crossed and the I's are dotted to make sure that there are no federal rules or regulations that are being sidestepped when it comes to how public employees can then pursue private sector job opportunities while they're still working for the government. The Axios report said that Saki would be hosting a show on Peacock, which is NBC Universal streaming platform, and also be part of the network's live programming schedule, but not taking over for Rachel Maddow in the 9 p.m. time slot. That's according to Axios, which some people have been speculating. So we will continue to see what happens as that develops. Now, we have an important recall for you. If you use aerosol antiperspirant, there is a recall there. These are suave products. This is because there are elevated levels of benzene found in these products, which is potentially a cancer-causing agent. So the products that are being recalled are, these are aerosol cans, suave 24-hour protection aerosol antiperspirant powder in the 4-ounce can and the 6-ounce can, and also suave 24-hour protect. And we have, those, we have that information specifically on WKYC.com. These are the products with expiration dates through September of 2023. Now, benzene can result in cancer, as I said, but Unilever, which produces these products, says that based on an independent health hazard evaluation, the amounts detected in these recalled products would be unlikely to cause health issues. So they say that they are doing this out of an abundance of caution. Anybody with these recalled products is being asked to throw them away and then contact Unilever. The number to do that is 1-866-204-9755. Five, six. Again, that's one 204 9756 and we do have that number on WKYC.com. In case you missed it and get, get, didn't get to write one of those down there, but of course you could always go back to this post and rewind and get it that way as well. Now we're hearing a little bit more about what happened at the Oscars after Will Smith slapped Chris Rock. I'm sure you definitely know the details by now, but it happened after Chris Rock made a joke at the expense of Jada Pinkett Smith, Will Smith's wife. So Will Smith walked up on the stage, slapped him, came off the stage, and then said, keep my wife's mouth out, keep my wife's name out of your expletive mouth. So Oscar producers are saying that the Los Angeles police were there, and they were ready to arrest Will Smith in that moment. They were calling it battery, and they were saying they'll go get him. We're prepared. You can press charges right now. And Chris Rock at the time, according to this producer, says uh, this producer is Will Packer, he told this to ABC's Good Morning America. He said that Chris Rock said, no, 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 I'm fine, and even to the point where the producer then had to say to Chris Rock, let the police finish, let them tell you what your options are, and then the police laid out the options and said, would you like us to take any action? And Chris Rock said, no, I don't want you to take any action. Now, uh, in a longer version of the interview on Good Morning America, this producer said that um, he initially thought that it was a bit, so he, the public was not alone in thinking that this was a joke. This was something staged between Will Smith and Chris Rock, but according to these behind-the-scenes accounts of what happened, not a bit, not something that was staged between the two of them. And at the moment that it happened, that producer said, not concerned, 
not concerned at all. But since then, on Wednesday, the Academy of Motion Pictures, Arts and Sciences did meet and they initiated disciplinary proceedings against Will Smith. These are for violations of the group's standards of conduct. So Smith could be suspended, expelled, or otherwise sanctioned. So a lot of leeway there for what could happen to Will Smith. The Academy says that Will Smith has the opportunity to defend himself in a written response before the board meets again. That will be on April 18th. We do know that he did apologize. He said that he was in the wrong, and uh, we'll, have to see, we'll have to see where it goes from there. Now we have news about another big star coming here to Northeast Ohio. Tom Hanks will be throwing out the first pitch at the Cleveland Guardians home opener. You know that's coming up on April 15th. That'll be a Friday game. A little bit different, a Friday night game. Here's what Tom Hanks said. He says, I've had Guardians fever since 1977 when I caught my first game in Section 19 of Cleveland's Lakefront Municipal Stadium. I'm honored to return to Cleveland and Progressive Field for the first home game of the Cleveland Guardians era. He, was, uh, he started his acting career here in Northeast Ohio at the Great Lakes Theater Festival in Cleveland. So he is the person who helped announce the name change. That was in a video back on July 23rd, 2021. So we could have maybe seen this coming, that Tom Hanks would be involved in the official home opener to usher in the area of the Cleveland Guardians. So tickets for that home opener are still available. The game starts at 7, 10 p.m., and they are playing the San Francisco Giants. Something else that's coming back here to Northeast Ohio is Eggshell Land. This is an iconic Easter egg display. It's the Manolio family Eggshell Land. It's presented by the Euclid Beach Boys. It'll be here today through April 17th at Eddie Fruit Farm in Chesterland. So Eggshell Land, in case you're not aware, it was an Easter season tradition as Ron Manolio put together these brightly colored egg displays in different designs, and he did it for more than 55 years. So after he passed away, the Euclid Beach Boys wanted to continue that, so they recreated the display starting back in 2014. And this year, 2022, this marks the 63rd, 63rd year that Eggshell Land will be displayed in the Cleveland area. And this year it will be indoors because, as we know, weather is a bit unpredictable right now here in Northeast Ohio in the springtime. So the idea here is to preserve these original eggshells and keep them out from being exposed from Northeast Ohio's springtime weather. And before we go, I have to tell you about shocking video that was released from the Cleveland Orchestra. This shocking video shows Bigfoot with a new twist here in Northeast Ohio at Blossom Music Center. This is never before seen footage. It shows him in action, hiding in the woods, scavenging for food, actually sitting in the stands at Blossom Music Center. And I also have to tell you, to make sure to look at your calendar because today is April Fool's Day and this is obviously a very cute April Fool's joke from the Cleveland Orchestra. No, there was no Bigfoot sighting officially at Blossom Music Center, but this part, this is not a joke. The Bigfoot video is part of announcing the Cleveland Orchestra's return to Blossom Music Center, which will be happening again this spring and summer. And you can get those tickets starting April 4th next week, okay? So that schedule will kick off on July 2nd, and it goes through September 3rd and 4th. There's the Salute to America on the 4th of July. Lots of great classical music. There's Broadway music that will be there. The Sound of Music will be there. Uh, lots, of, lots of great opportunities to get to Blossom Music Center and see the Cleveland Orchestra. I got the opportunity to go last season, definitely hoping to go back. It is a, it's a very cool experience. So if you're used to going to Blossom Music Center for any of the other concerts that are so great that happen there all summer long, take this opportunity potentially to have a little picnic and see the Cleveland Orchestra there as well. That's it for your three news now update today for Friday, April 1st. I hope you don't get tricked too badly out there on this April Fool's Day. Keep your eyes up, people, and be skeptical. Be skeptical of the things that you see and hear today all around you. I will see you back here tomorrow with more 3 News Now.